After the train bombings in Madrid in 2004, the European Council created the position of EU Counterterrorism Coordinator, which is intended to advance EU efforts in combating terrorism. Soon after Covid locked down the world for the first time, the Counterterrorism Coordinator submitted this report, investigating online gaming in the context of the fight against terrorism. You'll never guess which game was mentioned. I mean, yes, Counter-Strike is mentioned, but so is Call of Duty, Fortnite, and Doom 2, which gets a particularly scathing write-up. But I'm here primarily for the Counter-Strike. But I'm not here to preach to the choir, nor to stir up rage bait. I'm going to set that all aside and to try and learn something from this report, because it is interesting to try and understand how they may think this game is connected with terrorism, especially when you probably know far more about the game than the people writing these reports do. So we'll get this out of the way now. You don't think Counter-Strike will make you a terrorist? I don't either. And if I'm honest, I don't think even this report is suggesting that. It's merely trying to find any links, regardless of whether it's merely connection as opposed to correlation or, God forbid, causation. So this report mentions Counter-Strike four times. Three times with a dash between the words and once without. The first mention, the one without the dash, is here where it talks about the Munich shooter David Ali Sonboli and how he was active on Steam and gathered more than 4,000 gaming hours in Counter-Strike. This right here is a footnote for this paragraph, saying that these gaming platforms could replace other social networks as the preferred channel for terrorist propaganda and recruitment, and over the next few pages it gives reasons for why. Some of these are very factual, like the claim that the youth of today are the adults of tomorrow, while others are more like socially isolated individuals are drawn to violence, which I'm not so happy about but it's essentially saying that gamers are young and susceptible to manipulation as they are socially isolated so can be recruited in secret via extremist communities and spicy memes. I mean, it's all worth being aware of. There are echo chambers online. I'd argue any community you're part of is an echo chamber of some sort. I'd be more concerned about what my parents are reading on Facebook, but there is something to the claim that what's going on in gaming communities is typically more concealed behind private, encrypted chats and unmonitored voice communications. I get the impression this report is implying the Munich killer, lonely and bullied through life, sought comfort in gaming and was possibly further radicalised by the people and groups who he found via his online gaming presence. So what's this report suggesting exactly? What does it think comes first? Extremist beliefs or hanging out in extreme communities? Or a bit of both? Or that normal people can gradually creep towards radicalization, one inappropriate joke, one dank meme, one podcast at a time, and it's suggesting the gaming community around Counter-Strike may lead people down this path, but that it's all too underground and secretive to be more specific than that. The report mentions Steam and inappropriate forums in the same sentence, but is it suggesting that these forums are a part of Steam? I attempted to figure this out. Another footnote in the article does elaborate on this, saying that the social platform of Steam is mostly unmonitored and as a result of this has gained popularity among violent extremists, and then it lists a bunch of hateful content that certain groups appear to have glorified on Steam. But it was this other report I found that did a much, much better job of talking about extremist activity on Steam. I should have made this video about this document instead if I'm honest, but I'll just link to it in the description should you want to read it. This appears to have been published a year after the EU coordinators one, and it mentions how CSGO was the most associated game with this kind of behaviour. But unlike the coordinators report, this one actually bothers to say that it is likely just because it's an extremely popular game, and it doesn't suggest that CSGO is in some way fueling these kinds of communities. So let's be clear here, nobody thinks the reason the Munich shooting happened was because of video games. You only have to look up the killer to understand that there are far more messed up things about him than the fact that he played games. The Wikipedia page on the incident contains dozens of possible motives and video games weren't blamed once. Video games were still mentioned and that apparently nobody liked the guy and they felt sorry for him so invited him to play with them. And I'm not exactly going to hold that kind of behaviour against the game, nor the game is involved. I do get a bit frustrated by the over-representation of video games and reports about him though. They're frequently mentioned, yet the mention is never elaborated on other than to simply declare that he played games. The Mirror, for instance, says the police raid on his property uncovered violent video games in his house, yet it doesn't elaborate on why it bothers to mention that and the BBC titles an entire section of their article about him, Video Games, even though it only briefly mentions them before going on to all sorts of other, far more incriminating sounding things. So yeah, I really dislike how video games are always brought up as though the mere mention of them is the smoking gun that's needed to connect them with whatever atrocity has just been committed. And likewise, I feel like they've only been brought up in this report to justify mentioning the Munich killer in this document that's about video games. So let's move on over to the next mention of Counter-Strike, which is here, where it says that Counter-Strike has the player go through missions as a terrorist, which is a painfully uneducated description of what Counter-Strike is. Sure, it's simple and it gets the point across that people in the game can play as terrorists, 
but to those unfamiliar with the game, it doesn't really do a good job of explaining what the game is about. It fails to mention that an equal amount of the time you're playing as a counter-terrorist, trying to thwart the terrorist's plans, or that you swap at half-time like a game of football, and how it's watched by millions and what supported are the teams playing rather than whether they're playing as the terrorists or not. But again, let's see why this reference exists. Maybe it will help to make more sense of it. Or not. Other games take the dangerous step of placing players in the shoes of terrorists. And I think that's equally horribly worded. I mentioned this in my previous video, where I feel that Counter-Strike being about terrorists makes it a very easy target for this kind of thing, where it implies it's a gateway to terrorist activity. If it was about cops and robbers, I doubt they'd be concerned it would turn people into robbers. Or cops for that matter. Not cowboys or Indians. I think this is the bit I resent the most, where the whole paragraph implies that exposure to violent video games can lead to aggressive thoughts and behaviour, psychological instability and lack of empathy, and then a link to a pretty long and complicated sounding study. Now I urge you do more than 99% of people reading this article would do here, and to actually go and read that study, or at the very least the discussion section of that study. I guarantee you it's worth it. This study says, overwhelmingly, that we conclude that there were no detrimental effects of violent video gameplay, and an extensive game intervention over the course of two months did not reveal any specific changes in aggression, empathy, interpersonal competencies, impulsivity related constructs, depressivity, anxiety or executive control functions. The present results thus provide strong evidence against the frequently debated negative effects of playing violent video games in adults and will therefore help to communicate a more realistic scientific perspective on the effects of violent video gaming. In other words, the article referenced overwhelmingly states they did not find evidence of all the stuff that was implied they had found when mentioned in the EU terrorism report. The reference should probably have been placed up here instead because all it does to imply there's a connection is to say that others have claimed to have found violent video game links, but we haven't. So yeah, this use of a reference really makes me angry because it's a sloppy sort of thing that even I as a YouTuber would be called out on if I tried to use a scientific sounding study to claim something that the study itself wasn't claiming. And I'm a YouTuber, not the EU counterterrorism coordinator. Now we move on to the last two mentions of Counter-Strike, which are here, and it's talking about money laundering and how video games and online marketplaces and microtransactions can be used to hide such illegal activities. It starts by talking about unofficial secondary markets, and with Counter-Strike this would mean all those third-party sites that pop up about the place selling weapon skins for below market rate. And I 100% agree with this report here. While I never suspected terrorist activity on these sites, I do suspect a secretive and predatory system whereby gambling sites take people's skins and then sell them back to these same people on these skin sites, in an endless, super profitable, opaque system. So opaque it's impossible to prove or disprove whether it exists one way or the other, but it's how I'd do it if I were to run a skin gambling site. So while I agree with this report here, the counter-terrorism coordinator then ruins the mention of all this with the reference used here, or rather, the lack of a reference. Apparently, Valve declared almost all of the microtransactions carried out in Counter-Strike to be part of money laundering operations. No, this claim is wildly misleading, in almost every way imaginable. So wrong that I feel I must be doing something wrong myself here. So let's get this straight. The report clearly states that both these things occurred in 2018, but I can find no reference of either things occurring in that year. The Fortnite thing is from early in 2019, so only about a month out, but the articles about the microtransactions in CSGO are from the second half of 2019. And also the statement itself is wildly misleading. Allow me to prove this to you in about 10 seconds. Google Valve Counter-Strike All Microtransactions. Vice article from 2019 with a very similar headline. And within this, the link to the original blog post. And here is the source of that information. Which the Vice article got wrong, which in turn, the counter-terrorism coordinator got wrong. Because here, Valve states that nearly all key purchases that were being traded or sold on the marketplace were believed to be fraud sourced, so they stopped that from happening. In other words, the counter-terrorism coordinator implies almost all microtransactions are dirty and ongoing, and speaks about all these in the present tense, when in actual fact it was only known about from this blog post where Valve said it was one part, and likely just a tiny fraction, of all the trades within the digital economy, and it's one aspect of it that they had blocked by the time such information had gone public in the first place. And I think these are important distinctions to make, that weren't made in the report. When I started out with this, I didn't think I could be objective about this document, but I take that back now, because I believe that you watching this are in a better position than most people are to understand how Counter-Strike is mentioned and connected with terrorism in these given contexts. 
Most people reading this won't be so understanding. They'll see Counter-Strike in a document about terrorism, and that's it. They'll see it as an extremist game that's used to recruit terrorists the world over. Look, here's C4, and I'm planting it in an Italian setting. Look at me being all terroristic and shit. But you won't be like that, will you? You'll feel like getting defensive, seeing this report as being an unjust attack on your favourite game by some clueless person in authority. I felt like that at first too. But let's not be like that. Let's be better than that, and use this report to enhance our own knowledge and awareness in some way. Yes, the EU Counterterrorism Coordinator's Counter-Strike segment seems shockingly poorly researched, but I like to think that he knows about his stuff. And if he does, and his concerns are true, then we stand to benefit greatly from being aware of the hidden risks and bad actors operating below the surface of our gaming community, even if they may be very few and far between. I've never really thought about this side of things until now, and I think most of you who simply play the game will feel the same way. But with the community around this game being so large and diverse, it would be stranger for there not to be a dangerous part to it. And we should take these risks seriously, and to be on the lookout for those who may be at risk. Honestly, I still can't imagine somebody going from playing matchmaking to joining an extreme cult of some kind without there being other glaring red flags in their life already, as was very clearly the case with the Munich killer. But what do I know? I'm not the EU's counter-terrorism coordinator after all. No, we are Counter-Strike's ambassadors. We need to represent the game for all those people who hear so many bad things about it. It's on us to passionately defend the aspects of the game that we love, to explain the thrill of matchmaking and the joy of viewing the competitive scene on the big screen. But equally, we'll be doing the game no favours by just blindly defending it all from criticism. So remain vigilant, or you'll only be doing the bad actors a favour. And it sure would be a shame to help the terrorists 